Welcome to CMX, the largest association of community professionals. We're dedicated to helping all of us learn and grow. Got to do a little bit of housekeeping before we start with our amazing guest today, Max Pete, the Double Duty Community Manager. So, hey, Alex. Today's event is sponsored by Discourse and Common Room. Discourse is the powerful community platform that enhances online interactions by combining the power of long-form discussion with a real-time chat. Their customizable all-in-one software includes moderation controls, custom user privileges, powerful reporting, and over 60 official plugins to make each Discord site an, a unique experience. With Discourse, you can collaborate with your coworkers, start an external support forum, build a developer knowledge base, and so much more. Unlock the power of Discourse today with your free 14-day trial. Okay, one more bit of housekeeping. This is about Common Room. Common Room is the leading intelligent community growth platform. It offers more than 25 native integrations, everything from Slack, Discord, and Discourse to Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, GitHub, Reddit, and Bevy, and CRMs like HubSpot and Salesforce. It unifies all that community data to deliver actionable insights. Common Room's customers include community-powered companies like Asana, Atlassian, Airtable, Confluent, HubSpot, Figma, Grammarly, Notion, and Webflow, and Community. DevRel and GTM meters love using Common Room because it makes it easy to send automated messages, manage and track community cohort programs, set up real-time team alerts for any kind of community activity, discover and deliver new business leads, measure direct business impact with real numbers and elevate the importance of their community and their role as a leader within the organization. Phew. Okay. That's all the sponsor information. Now let's get, get to the show. We've got a great show for you today. I'm so excited to bring up to the stage, our beloved colleague, the double duty community manager, <laughs> Max Pete. Um, before you we get started, too kind. <laughs> If you have any questions for Max or myself, feel free to, to just post them right here in the general chat, okay? So without further ado, we're bringing Max up to the stage. Max, welcome to CMX Connect Denver. Tell us, how did you get started as a community manager and a customer service manager? What was your path? Yeah, so first, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is great to be here. Uh, my path was totally accidental, which I am sure I'm sure that a lot of other community managers kind of fell into something similar. Um, during the start of the pandemic, I was full time freelancing in website design and consulting, and I got really burnt out from the work. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of clients and people need to go online to create websites, but I just was like really tired of what I was doing. And I was in the middle of looking for something different, but I couldn't, we couldn't leave our houses to go network with people. So Googling some stuff, I came across a freelance community and was like, all right, well, let me just join that community. See if this is something I like and I want to be part of. Um, and since joining that, I was, impressed with so many other freelancers who were part of the group, I was able to participate in giving advice and, and asking questions and getting help and, and sharing job opportunities. And I just got really involved. The community was hosted through Slack. And, um, and so I was pretty much on there every single day, um, probably for hours every day. And about three months into that, I would say the end of summer of 2020, I saw a job posting for the community manager, a part-time community manager at that, um, at the community. And so I messaged the founder and I was like, Hey, I saw this role pop up. I've never heard of this role before. I've never been a community manager before, but like, it's something that I'm kind of doing now and would love to explore this opportunity. And she was like, Hey, honestly, if, if you want it, it's yours. We were hoping that you would reach out about this. And so it ended up um, creating a whole new career path for me um it was part-time and, and freelance at the time so i didn't necessarily stop all the work that i was doing prior but it gave me some space to go into community management and from there i got um involved in community club and cmx because i had no idea that these organizations existed either and people were actually doing this for full-time work um which was amazing and 
I went through C school, which is community clubs, um, community management certification program and, and just got really involved, uh, through there. Um, and was like, okay, cool. This is something that I actually want to do full time. Um, I think this is like the new career path that I want to explore. And, um, where I work now is this organization called super high. So we're like an online creative education platform. We teach code design project management courses. Um, and I've, I took their courses back in 2018 uh, I, yeah, to help me with my freelancing career. And I've been messaging the CEO ever since, kind of just like being friendly and being in touch and, that, and being part of their community too. And so one Friday, this was back in like November of 2021, I just messaged them. I was like, hey, I'm looking for a full-time uh, community manager role. Um, if anything ever opens up, I would love the opportunity to work. For you and it was actually perfect timing because they just closed their series a round of funding and they were like oh you should talk to our product manager on monday and then that led into a week or two of interviews um and i got hired in december of 2021 so i've been with them for a year and five months um six months uh and yeah i had no idea like if you would ask me a few years ago that what this is what i'd be doing i'd be like i don't i didn't know that this was like a thing um but yeah I, I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life um i i've always been looking for like when i first started when i first started out of school i was in like the music industry doing marketing and, and advertising and i really thought that was my thing but there was always something that was like missing from that um and through freelancing again similar story I thought that was my thing, but I, I always felt like there was something missing. And it wasn't until I hit the community space that I felt like it kind of checked all my boxes. Um, so here I am today. I think that is so true of so, well, so many of us. Like I consider myself to be a generalist or a polymath. And I know everybody I keep meeting in community has multiple talents and multiple abilities. Um, mm -hmm. So... I'm very curious, not only are you a community manager, you're also a customer service manager. How the heck do you balance the two? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so my role is hybrid at Fry um, because community is so ingrained in everything that we do at the company. Um, I also am in uh, one of the customer support leads. Uh, so my job is not just to do community programming or helping with community management, but also to like run our customer support. Um, and honestly, I think when I first started, it was a little daunting because it's kind of like two jobs in one, but I think as you get, as I got, you know, through the process, you're able to better like manage things. So I know for example, um, I'm located in California, so I'm on PST time and most of my team is in um, New York or in Europe. So I'm one of the last people to wake up and get started. And so my mornings are very busy of going through things. Um, and so that's when I dedicate, like my morning time is to uh, wake up, check all the inboxes, reply to things I need to get replied to and like dedicate that hour or two to like really kind of catch up on things um, and then do another round of that in the afternoon maybe like an hour or two before I kind of sign off for the day. And so creating that schedule, I think is super important, right? Because otherwise what I found happening to me in the beginning was just constantly checking like between our, our communities hosted on Slack and our customer support platform is on help scout. So constantly going through help scout to Slack helps. And I could never like get work done because I was just checking both things all the time. Um, and while it's important to like, be on top of your replies and, and messages and things like that for your community and customer support. I think a few hours like of delay or even 24 hours of delay on, on some certain um, messages, like it's not, people are not expecting you to reply really quickly. And what I found out too, is that you kind of set a bad precedence precedence. If you um, reply too quickly, because then people are going to expect that from going forward. And so uh yeah my morning time is i go through help scout i go through slack make sure stuff is going and then i do some and then usually my mornings are meetings so then i go have my meeting time uh 
might do another quick check on that stuff. And then I do some deep work where I'm just like either in notion writing documentation or working on strategy or things that are like more long-term. Um, and then I go back into, uh, helps you out in Slack at the end. But I think, yeah, time chunking is definitely like the way to go. Otherwise you can very much burn yourself out quickly. And also you end up not doing that great of work because you're just, your context switching way too, way too much. Sounds like a lot. So tell me, um, everybody has, um, oh, Jeffrey Rose says, I love your career trajectory, Max. As someone who also had a solid foundation in customer service roles prior to transitioning to community management, I felt like having that support background gave me some of the soft skills that empowered me to excel once I started my professional journey as a CM. What are some of the ways in your experience in support that helped you to be a better community manager? Yeah, that's a great question. It is. Um, yeah, I would say one of the top ones I can think of is being able to like recognizing tracking feedback. Um, some customer support, like we track a lot of our feedback of like, okay, are members getting stuck on a certain area? Do they, um, are they, having a bad experience, are we getting similar things that are coming up so that we can like either go to other teams in our company to like address these issues. For example, if there's technical bugs, bugs that they're running into, can we have a meeting with our engineering department and figure out how we can solve this? Or if there's things that are certain, uh, maybe wrong in the way they're written on the website where it's confusing so we can go to our content and design team. Um, and so being able to use like, uh, I would say like, yeah, tracking feedback, but then also for community things as well. Like what, what are common issues that are coming up in the community? What are common, um, you know, things that are being shared uh, that we can use for potential like event programming or resources that we're building or different things that, you know, like that I learned how to do in the customer support side that I can also do on the um, community side. I would also say like, you know, one of the first things that you do or that you are as a customer support person is you're the first line of defense, right? So someone's going to be angry. They're going to go to you and express their anger or frustration or whatever it is they're going through. Um, and so like really being able to understand their problem and help them through a solution um, is important. And that's something that I kind of learned in, in the community side of things too, because sometimes people express their frustrations, but um, they really just want someone that's going to listen to them and hear them out and not necessarily, uh, you know, think that, oh, they're just a bad community member or they're a bad person because they're just complaining, but no, like, how can we solve it? How can we address this issue? And so, um, you know, that, that inspired me a lot to do more of like one-on-one -on -one. Uh, member check-ins with our community members, right? So like, okay, someone has, might have a frustrating experience or they might not be able to, um, they might be going through something that uh, they're not super happy about. So, okay, let's get on the call. Let's discuss this. I'll be there to like work with them. Um, it's not necessarily something that's scalable, right? Cause you only have so many hours in a day, time zone conflicts and all this, but it's, um, it's something that's like, I found very helpful to connect with my members um, as well. And one other thing that comes top of mind is um, surprise and delights. So another thing, right? Like a, a member, you know, might be reached out to customer support and be like, Oh, like for, for us, for example, right. Cause we have a lot of courses. So someone finishes the course and they reach out to us and they're like, Oh, thank you so much. Like for this course, because um, we, I, ended up getting a, a front end development job or it led me into an internship or, you know, whatever this might be. And so like, as a, in customer support, we are always like thinking of ways that we could um, highlight those people who have like gone through our program and um, it's really helped change our life. And so we're like, all right, like, let's do something small. Like maybe we'll just ask for their address and send them, um, send them something like a dessert or something to celebrate or, we have yearly memberships on our platform. So maybe let's give them a free year next year or like half off to like continue their courses or 
you know, continue what they're wanting to do. And then like from that on the customer support side, we were like, wait, we can do this in the community too. Like members are expressing stuff in the community as well. So like, why don't we just run these surprise and delights um, for our members? And uh, honestly, I'm very fortunate where our team gives us a budget to do this per month. Um, and so I were able to do sort of things like this, but like, if you don't have a budget for surprise and delights or something's relatively small, like there are some things that you can do. Um, for example, like if there's community members that are really excelling in what they're doing and you have a weekly monthly newsletter, you can highlight them in your newsletter. You can highlight them in social posts, um, in on LinkedIn or anything that you're doing. You can, um, you know, if you have a, if you don't, if you have a program or something that costs money, you can give them maybe free access to, or a discount to, or a partner that you're working with. Right. So if you're working with partners, like for example, like Figma or Notion or things like that, and you have discounts to those um, platforms, that could be something that you can help with like a surprise and delight. So I wouldn't let the money thing stop you if that's something that your organization doesn't necessarily have. Um, honestly too, even just a one-on-one, -on -one, like a one, direct message so you see someone that shares something really cool send them a message being like hey thank you so much for sharing this congratulations on this this is awesome like we're very like proud of you for that that goes a long way um and it takes minutes to do um so yeah i would say like those are the things that I say top of mind yes minimal i mean it's it's such an easy thing to do and and, um, and it has such a lasting and, and really wonderful impact. Um, Alex just commented, I'm gonna just share real quickly. I also have a support background prior to community. I wanna add that support and customer service skills also help to separate the question or complaint that the person is actually saying versus what they mean or, or need. That is very profound. Um, uh -huh. Often the question is a result of their understanding and giving them what they often ask isn't going to solve the root problem. Support gives you the tools to know how to dig, dig, dig better. I completely agree. Yeah, that's spot on. Um, yeah, couldn't even say that better myself. So thank you, Alex, for that. Um, yeah. yeah. He also says it's easy to forget to thank support members for the contribution. And it's mm -hmm. true. It's very true. That's, that's, um, that's really, really critical. And there's so many different ways that you can do that, that are range from free to, you know, big party. Um, so what every community manager role is a little bit different. Um, I heard you talk about content. What else do you do as part of your community manager role? Yeah. So we, um, I, you know, super high is a relatively small team. So, and community is very important across all departments. So I'm, I'm responsible for the community stuff, but I'm also like very dialed into like our marketing and content and um, obviously support. And then also like working with our engineering team um, and strategy team as well. Um, I would say like, you know, one thing that we've been really working on a lot this past year is building better resources for our members. Um, so we're always looking to make their community member experience better. Like our community is hosted on Slack. Um, and while Slack has a lot of great benefits, it also has a lot of downsides. And one of them being is, is that, um, you know, if you're not on Slack on a regular basis, you stuff gets missed and then it gets overwhelming where you're like, there's 50 notifications. I'm not going to check it. I'm just, I don't want, I want to start from fresh. So um, one of the things that we built was a community hub um, based on feedback from our members. We built a community hub on Notion where it, it um, is essentially the house of all the important information. So we have a, we have a dedicated area for resources that are shared within the community. So, and that's the, and that's broken down in categories such as like, design resources, coding resources, project management, accessibility, all these different resources that members can go and, and check out where they're, that have been shared in the community and we wanna like put it, we wanna highlight them more. Um, we, part of the feedback that we saw about like, yeah, it being overwhelming is like, okay, well, why don't we just do weekly roundups of things that are happening in our community so members can check every Thursday 
and see what's been happen, happening. And I don't have to feel pressure about checking every single day all the time. Um, and so every Thursday, uh, also because super high does the four day work week. So we do Monday through Thursday with Fridays off. Um, and, uh, so every Thursday we do a weekly roundup. We, it's basically a recap of everything that's been discussed in the community and members can go to one post. They can see stuff that's broken down by category. Um, and it's been super helpful, um, for them. Um, and another thing, part of the content things that I've been working on a lot is that, uh, one of our most popular channels, and this is kind of true across the board in like other communities I'm part of is like opportunity channels, right? Like people are always looking for work and better opportunities out there. And so, um, you know, our, our community does a great job on sharing opportunities and resources, but we, uh, our community team was like, why don't we just do something a little bit more? And so we kind of did, we do these midweek job roundups. So we go through LinkedIn and other job boards and we pick things that are relevant to what our members are, um, where their levels are at. So like for designers and project managers and developers, and we put together a big post of, um, jobs that they can apply to. Um, and, you know, not just things that are folk in our communities based all over the world. So like not just, just jobs that are based in the States, but also in Europe in Africa and Asia, um, Australia. And so like, we want to make sure like there is, we're being accessible as we can. Um, and I would say the last thing that we've been focusing on a lot, and this is also part of, I would say content as well um is event programming so we really built like our event programming schedule uh where we do at least one event per month um we bring in a guest speaker who uh you know is someone that based on like topics that are discussed in our community that's relevant to like what we're what the community members are discussing about um we record all those sessions as well and we host them in our in our community hub so members who are uh, not able to attend live or just time zone conflicts or whatever it might be are able to check them out. Um, and they've been a really great hit. And we also do get our community members involved in events for AMAs. So we have Ask Me Anything events um, that are hosted through our Slack channel. Um, they're all a sync. So um, members can drop in a question and then the person will answer them during a set amount of time. Um, and we feed, we only feature our community members to be guests on those. So it's a cool way to uh, get our members involved um, because we have people that, you know, have founded agencies or have grown their businesses or have like been doing something like for years and um, are able to help out other members. And that's, that's a whole part of our community. So we want members helping each other. So um, it's been a really cool thing to, to build. Wow. That's amazing. I'm curious about one thing. It's a little bit of a backtrack. Given the fact mm -hmm. that you're a website designer and therefore a very visually skilled person, do you get to do fun things like videos um, and any design work? Do you even have the bandwidth to do that? Yeah, so um, I don't do a ton of the creative side of things because we do have a really great design team. And like, honestly, whatever I could do, they're going to 10x it way better and way quicker too. But one thing that we collaborated with with the design team is to build templates for our community team to use. So for um, event flyers, event posts, things like that, we worked with our design team to make a standardized template that we can plug and play on the community side um, where we don't need to always like bug them for requests and things like that. Um, so we still get it. Like I still get to tweak some design stuff in Figma, which is pretty cool, but, um, yeah, kind of like, that's like my past life now. Um, I just, I, I, I do it for fun on, on the side sometimes, but, uh, I mean, yeah, our design team is incredible and like, I, they're, they're going to do anything way better than what I'm going to do. Oh, you're being very modest. <laughs> I wonder, um, I wonder, thinking about other folks who are here who who would like to learn from you, myself included, um, have you found any unusual or maybe typical situations um, where you 
weren't sure how to wiggle, how to, how to, how to make it work. And then you found a way to make it work. Like, for example, um, I've in the past, um, encountered territorial things. I don't know if you, if you have that at super high in the past, um, when I was doing events, there would be a little bit of territorialism. Um, and, um, it took me a, a while to come up with some strategies. I did do a lot of experimenting, um, to find things that worked. And I'm wondering if you've had challenges like that or, or different challenges where, um, you know, you were kind of in a, in a tough spot and you found some good ways to deal with them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, what's coming to mind really is just learning how to deal with negative feedback um, and not take it personally. Right. Um, I would say like, that's been a big thing that, um, having to like navigate with is like, if there's a complaint or a suggestion or things like that, that have, might have to do with the company or community or things like that. I, a lot of times internalize that and like, have to be like, Oh no, like that's a reflection of me. Um, and now I'm going to feel terrible about it. And my whole day is going to be ruined. Um, but and so my strategy with like these once it started happening was like okay like i need to bring this up with my greater team and like we need to work through this together and like realize that like we're not an island of one um and we're you know we're a team like so one thing affects us all and like we're all there to support one another um and a lot of unlearning like that too and like i think it's part of it comes from prior to this, I was freelancing full time. So everything was kind of like on my shoulders. And I felt like the, the pressure of that all. Um, and so having to unlearn that while being a part of a supportive company, where it's like, okay, like, nothing, like, it's not on my shoulders, like I have to like, we're, we all work together on this. Um, and we're all there to help one another. So that's like been a big thing. And like, honestly, having regular one on one check ins with my manager has been helpful and my team, especially as a remote, you know, employee, especially as someone who's like either three hours to eight hours behind everyone else. Um, it's, I, you know, having to dedicate meeting time um, for these, like to just even talk to one another, I think has been super helpful and important. Um, I'm trying to think like what else, if there's anything that's been major. But yeah, I mean, I think it's mostly mostly been that that I can think of. Well, Chris Miles has a really good question. Have you had the experience of managing partnership programs and what have been the hurdles there that you overcome? Yeah, so we have um, we have a couple of partnership programs which I haven't necessarily been the lead on because um, they've kind of like been in place since I've I've gotten there. Um, we have one that like we are working with who they'll send us like their students to sign up for a membership. Um, and we kind of like help onboard those members. Um, I would say the hurdle for those is that it's, it's hard to know like how many are coming in on a, on a regular basis and like how to like best dedicate time for that. So for example, we could have one week where we get no new partnership requests on, on from them. And um, it's, a, you know, we don't have to worry about like onboarding new members or making sure that they can sign up properly or one week we'll have um, five or 10 come in. And so like, we're constantly like, switching our energy to focus on that. Um, so I think we had a couple the the solutions for those are uh having quarterly meetings and kind of seeing like okay when are like the busier times of those requests that will come in and also that set some more that set some boundaries up so for example if a if one of their requests came in let's make sure that we have um some guidelines in there that it will take us two day two business days to make sure that that part is fulfilled so we don't feel rushed to uh, make sure that they have a new membership and that everything's onboarded and it's right away like it gives our team a little bit of breathing room because i think that added a little bit of extra stress we're like always worried about okay is this partnership request coming in do we have to drop everything that we're doing at this point to make sure that this member is onboarded correctly 
Um, and so I think setting some guidelines was really important. Um, but I think beyond that, like just making sure that you are checking in with your partner programs uh, on a frequent basis, that if that's once a quarter, if that's twice a year, whatever it might be, even if things are going well, just a gut check, you know, just, Hey, how are, you know, how are things going? Uh, are your, our members happy? Are, do we have our members using your coupon code and are things working properly with them and vice versa? Um, I think, you know, it doesn't hurt to check in um, because for one, it could lead to bigger opportunities. Um, and for two, if, if you can catch things early too. So if there is an actual problem that they might not be vocal about, um, you can catch that early enough where it doesn't become something that's like, it hurts the relationship too much. Nice. Simi has a question. Have you had experience with any hurdles with different language barriers and translations in your community members engagement level? How did you overcome that? Yeah, so um, we, I mean, yet yeah, we, we do. Uh, so like our, everything, all our courses and main communication pieces that we do are all in English. Um, and so that's something that's like kind of like expressed before members have to pay for something just so that they're aware of this. Um, but we do have members that are, uh, you know, English is a second language. Um, and I would say like the hurdles are, I would just say sometimes miscommunication, right? Because they, I might be misunderstanding what they're asking for or vice versa. Um, and so it just creates a little bit of added, added confusion. Um, but it's just, I think what's been helpful for those um, instances is just confirming on the the need at the end right so if there's been like an ask about a membership or a certain course or whatever it might be um to at the end of it to just like for you know for clarity or for context is this is this what you're asking for um versus like assuming like that's what they're asking for um i think that's been that's been helpful in 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 breaking that but but yeah, I mean, I, ideally, I, I wish, and I hope that this is something that we work on in the future more of, but like, it'd be awesome to have all of our courses and material in various languages um, in our community too. Um, I think it'd be really awesome to have like a, well, what we do too, and I forgot to mention this, we do have some local channels in our community. So we have one, for example, that um, members who are based in uh, Brazil um, or who speak Portuguese, um, who wanted to just communicate with one another in their native language. Uh, and so like we found solutions for that. So we, if we have, there's a lot of members who are, you know, speak another language and they want to just chat with other members in our community who speak that same language, we create those spaces for them to allow them to do that where, um, they, they feel more comfortable and connected. Cool. I have a question. Um, yeah. I think there's quite a few folks who are new to community management here today. And I was wondering, what advice would you give new community managers? That is a big question and a great question. Um, my number one advice is to, um, sorry, there's a loud truck going by me. Um, my number one advice is, uh, to connect with other community managers. Like when I first got started in the space, my big thing was like, I'm going to connect with as many people as I can introduce myself, um, you know, express what I'm interested in, ask if they want to get on a quick one-to-one -one call with me and just, just connect, right? Like have no real agenda. Like I don't want anything from them. I just kind of want to meet them and, and um, you know, see what they're about. And, you know, it, community managers are really receptive. They're very like, they want to dedicate time and, and help one another. Um, and yeah, as long as it's genuine, like genuine people really want to like, you know, meet new community managers. There's always something that, you know, if you have to learn their mindset, there's always something new to learn about. So um, I would say connect with any community managers as you can connect with um, be part of, communities like CMX, Community Club, uh, Common Room, um, 
uh, talk base. I'm, I'm blanking on, on some right now, but, uh, and just see what other community managers are one, what, what they're facing, what they're dealing with, um, uh, what they're working on, you know, building things like that. Um, because you can use all that as inspiration to what you want to do or what you don't want to do. Right. Like, so you see a lot of, um, community managers who are like, struggling in a particular area and that's something that you're interested in then you can kind of like focus in on that and like kind of be that support um and that was something that i really uh did too as a new community manager i anytime someone needed some feedback on something or or wanted someone to fill out a survey or whatever it was i always raised my hand because i'm like I'm going to help out. I'm going to be as, I'm going to provide as much value and as I can, because I know that's going to all come back to me too. Um, and it's going to allow me to like learn and, and connect with people. And so, uh, yeah, if you're part of, you know, community club or CMX or things like that, like definitely like just get involved as much as you can attend events, um, see what, you know, is going on out there. Um, and don't be afraid to speak up. You know, you have a new perspective into things where, you know, there are community people that have been doing this for years. And, you know, while they're great and while they're considered experts, um, they might, you know, be blindsided on a certain thing just because they've been doing something the same way for years. And they're not thinking about the, the problem or, or solution as you might be with fresh eyes. And so don't be afraid to speak up. Um, if you see a problem of an area, fix it. Um, I think that's something that like my friend Lizzie and I kind of did with higher community website. Um, I tweeted out one day, I was like, why is there no database of community professionals who are looking for work? Um, I didn't know how to build it at all, but uh, Lizzie who works at softer was like, Hey, that's just design on softer. It's a no code platform. Um, we'll build it in a few hours and we'll just get it out there. Um, and so that was kind of like what we did and we just kind of ran with it. Um, you know, I don't think I was like necessarily the best qualified person to build this or, or to do this, but we were just like, why not? You know, like if, if we saw an area that needed a solution, we were just like, let's just put something together. So I think I would encourage, you know, new community people to do the same thing. You beat me to that one. Um, <laughs> cause I was going to ask you about that. Um, does anybody have any other questions for Max before we, um, kind of move on to the next thing? If you do, um, he says, um, Chris says, totally agree. I met with a community manager this week. And the best thing I learned during that meeting was that my audience and my community are massively different and I've never considered them as separate entities. That is really interesting. Um, wow. Do you want to comment on that, Max? Or you want to have a think about that? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say, you know, audience by being maybe like social media following or uh, people who are subscribed to your newsletter, but not necessarily part of your community. Um, from a marketing perspective, I sometimes think of it as like, the different levels of the funnel, right? Where like people who are necessarily in your audience might be um, people who wanna like learn more information, right? They're not necessarily sold on whatever you're selling to them, um, but they but they like it enough that they're subscribed to something or they're a part of something, but they're not necessarily in the community. And so like, the way I would look at it as being different is like, okay, how can we continue to educate this group into the benefits of joining the community where the community itself is like, okay, how can we get these members to stay and stick around and help people and recruit people and keep it like a thriving ecosystem? Um, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. Um, Alex had a really cool point. Max mentioned getting involved in um, CMX Community Club and so on. Don't forget your vendor's community if you're on a platform. Mm -hmm. My com company's community is on the Verant community and the support helps, ideas, etc. I get on Verant's community is invaluable. That's really wonderful. Um, so something... Go ahead, sorry. 
No, I was going to say that's that's so true. Like I'm, um, we use Common Room for our analytics at Super High, and I love their community. Um, and I ask for support all the time on there, and their team is like super helpful. So that's definitely a good recommendation there. It's true. Um, they are wonderful. So <laughs> another thing that you do, we've seen the Venn diagram between community manager and, and com- customer service manager is, and I look forward to this every time I go on to LinkedIn, is that you post some very, very thoughtful points um, about, about mental health, meaning by that I mean like, don't be so hard on yourself, um, mm-hmm. or about, you know, just, they're very zen. Um, and I was wondering, um, how do you come up with your ideas? Because I don't know about you, but some days I look and I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, I would say um, my inspiration for those is I write posts that things that I need to hear myself. Um, so a lot of people are like, Max, like you have this wisdom that you're sharing that's so thoughtful and everything. But I'm like, I'm honestly, I need to hear this myself. Like I'm, I'm writing this because I'm going through something and I'm just like, I'm going through overwhelm or anxiety or whatever it might be. And I just need to tell myself and remind myself of this. Um and then also like what happens with me is that I, I rarely will post on the spot. Um, sometimes I will where like th- something comes to my mind and I just like get it out there. But um, I usually like will make it a habit where once a day I will try to think of a post or an idea or something and then like get something scheduled or get something like that's in my note tab Um or if there's a certain day, where, like maybe a Monday or a Friday where I have like an hour or two and I'm just feeling super creative, I'll just knock out like five or six, seven posts and I just like leave them there in my bank and then I use them when I need to. Um, but I'm very rarely like the person that's like very on the spot to like think of something and to like post it. And so as much as I can schedule, as much as I can like write when I'm feeling creative, um, the better. And honestly too, like, the better the content too, because I feel like if I'm forced to like be creative or think of something, it's just not going to be great. <laughs> um, like nine times out of 10, it's not going to be great. So, uh, but when I am feeling like on it, like I'll just, I'll just keep going until like that my, my juices are done with that. Um, but yeah, most of the time too, my, you have to find your inspiration. You have to find your why, like, why are you posting this? Like, why do you want, do you want to just do it because everyone else is doing it? Do you want to, like it has to be a, a bigger reason for that um, to keep you consistent, to keep you actually like wanting to do this and not feel like it's a burden. Um, and honestly too, like there was, there's been a year or two where I just like stopped, you know, I kind of felt burnt out on it. I, I did it a lot. And I was just like, you know what, I'm taking a break. Uh, and that's okay too. Like, because you get into posting because it, or if you want to do something like you, don't feel like the pressure is like, okay, now I'm going to have to do this. Can you hear me? Oh. Did it break? Yep. 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 Alex says, I can't remember if you said this, but does your company use a support platform or ticketing system too? Mm -hmm. Or does customer support run through the community? I've had some interesting conversations this week internally with coworkers about where the line between this is really good support and community is curious to hear your other opinions. Yeah. So we, we use both. Um, We use help scout for our main support ticketing platform, but we also use our community for support as well. So we have like various support channels that our members can go to, to ask for help um, based on like what course that they're in, or they can email us, and it will get thrown into an inbox um, in our uh, help scout. Um, so, uh, yeah, the line between where support and community is, um, that's a good one. Uh, I would say that, you know, we, in our community where we have our support channels, uh, we really encourage our members to help one another if possible. Um, and we kind of have to, we kind of create that space for them to do that versus emailing us or directly. Um, they're only going to get someone from the support team to like kind of message them back. Um, but we always encourage them to like go into our community, ask for help, ask for members to like chime in. 
um, because members do want to help one another too. So you can have a support community, but you, but you can still have your members involved um, and have them help one another. So uh, I would say it's a bit of both. I would say our direction going forward is we're going to put more focus on everyone going to our community platform to ask for support just because members, we found that members learn better from one another um, and that members can search and, and access that stuff too, right? Where they might not be able to if they're just relying on our email support. Um, and so we, re we really want to encourage that conversation to happen in the community too. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always a challenge. Great question. So um, if anybody doesn't have any more questions, we're going to kind of talk about all the cool things that Max does outside of work. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Max is a DJ. He <laughs> is also a mentor with ADP List and he's also an activist. So can you tell us a little bit more about your outside activities? Yeah, so DJing is just for fun. Um, needed something creative to do outside of work. Uh, and I love music. I used to work in the music industry before this. So it's just something that I've been passionate about. Um, and yeah, just some creative outlet to do outside of community work. Um, mentoring has always been something I've been interested in. Um, and, you know, I've gotten so much help from members who, uh, community people who have helped me when I just got started. And so I want to, I want to return that favor and I want to, I want to create something that's accessible for members who don't have to pay for it. Um, and don't feel like, you know, they have that access to reach someone who has been doing this for a few years. And so, um, so yeah, I, uh, I've been doing that with ADP list. It's really cool. Um, and it's free for anyone who wants to book a time. Um, and so that's been fun. And then for, yeah, I'm part of a couple of nonprofits, one of them being uh, Nub Ability. So they're a nonprofit that teaches uh, kids with limb differences. So that means like people who have been born or had a traumatic accident um, and are missing any part of their limbs um, or both or all of them. Um, and we teach them sports. We, we usually focus on youth sports. So we work with kids anywhere between the ages of three to 17. Um, and all, all sports included football, basketball, baseball, track, swimming, um, everything. And it's just an amazing experience. Um, it's an amazing program. And uh, yeah, it's just something that's like near and dear to my heart. And I'm also part of a nonprofit called Born Just Right. And they focus on they're a design consulting um, company who works with brands like Microsoft and Mattel and um, to create more accessible products and um, more representation um, for their members. So for example, Microsoft Xbox has this controller now where you can customize it. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have two hands to use it. Um, Barbie has, uh, you know, new dolls that are in, wheelchairs or have prosthetic legs um or who yeah are looking or look different and so that's all part of like you know where we're, we are working with companies to just better show representation um and to create more accessible products for everyone so those are like really two near and dear organizations um in my heart um and i see chris says what is something that we didn't ask you that we should have uh, yeah, good it. question. I don't know, honestly. Um, I, ooh, I would say, or maybe something that I didn't touch on that I, that I think I should have is, um, and this goes for new community managers. This goes for anyone is, uh, and I always talk about this a lot is, um, shoot your shot, right? Like if you want an opportunity, if you want something, uh, ask for it. I think this is basically how this event came across I, I think i messaged Lori and i was like hey i'd love to be part of this too and she was like great like we'll figure out a time to do this what is that I, I don't know if that would have happened if i wouldn't have asked her for that because there's a million moving parts and and maybe i was on her radar but maybe i wasn't and so i would say always like if you want an opportunity if you want to do something ask you know if you hear no that's probably going to happen a lot of the times but that's okay like that's not going to put you 
at a worse spot than you're at today. Um, you're, you know, you, you could be really surprised and, and things having worked out that you wouldn't have imagined because you kind of asked for an opportunity or if you kind of put your name in the ring of, of whatever it might be. Um, and so that, that's always like my biggest piece of advice is that, you know, sometimes we get shy. We're like, Oh, I don't know if we should do it. We let imposter syndrome, like kind of like talk us out of situations or opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I would say whatever you can to like ignore that voice and just go for it. Um, you'll always be surprised of like what happens. That's that's wonderful. Hey, <laughs> folks want to be more, want to learn more about ADP and um, the different nonprofits you're involved with. Um, it, can they DM you um, on the yeah. CMX channel to learn more? Cause I'm personally interested in learning more. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping to be involved with this. Um, there's a company in um, Los Angeles. It's this, these two One's a tailor and one's a designer and they design adaptive clothing. And um, I'm dying for them to franchise and get like, they've talked to me about, you know, can we do this in Denver? So, um, you know, you never know what kind of connections you're going to make and, and what you're going to learn. So if folks, you know, this is, this is obviously of interest to me. Um, if folks want to learn more about that, um, I think, you know, ask Max and he'll put something in the CMX Slack channel or you can DM him. Does anybody yeah. have any other questions? Um, I can um, field them here, or if you want, if you feel more comfortable um, pinging Max on CMX Slack channel, you can do that too. Um, yeah, my, my messages are always open, um, Slack or LinkedIn or wherever you find me. Um, I'm always here to chat and, and, and be as helpful as, as I can, make time for a call. Um, yeah, don't feel, don't, don't be afraid to reach out. I'm like, I, I love chatting with people. So um, yeah, just, just let me know. Um, but it's been great to, to chat with you here. This is awesome. It's been wonderful to have you. This has been a truly delightful and amazing um, event. And I so thank everyone for their time and um, folks, you know, we'll see you on, on the CMX Slack channel and I hope everybody has an excellent day and take care. Thanks for all of your, awesome. your wonderful questions. Okay, bye. Thank you all. Cheers.